Tonight on the MTN News, a public health emergency. At times there's more film in a cup of water than there is in a regular cup of coffee. The state's Department of Environmental Quality is asking the residents of Heisham to stop drinking the town's water for the foreseeable future. It is a public health emergency and people do need to boil their water before consuming it. Plus, will the stalemate in Congress finally be broken tonight? Montana Republican Matt Rosendale among those who's been refusing to budge on the vote for Speaker of the House. Kevin! Hearn! Hearn. And we'll tell you what Wyoming's new Republican Congresswoman has to say about it. Your MTN News starts right now. From Montana's news leader, you're watching the MTN 10 o'clock news. Well, good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Riesinger. A historic fourth day of voting to elect a new House Speaker going late into the night on Capitol Hill. It has certainly proven to be a much more difficult task than most probably imagined. Kevin McCarthy came up short again in a 12th and 13th vote earlier today with Montana's Matt Rosendale, one of those standing in his way. A 14th vote got underway late tonight, and McCarthy still has not gotten the votes that he needs to get the bid. So it is still not settled yet tonight. Q2's David Jay has been in touch with our representatives from Montana and Wyoming, joins us now with more. Montana Congressman Matt Rosendale is among those opposed to Representative Kevin McCarthy. Rosendale spoke on the House floor on Thursday, and on Friday, he threw his support behind Kevin, but not McCarthy. As Kevin McCarthy moved closer Friday to becoming the country's next House Speaker, Montana Representative Rosendale was unwavering. Kevin! <laughs> on Thursday, he talked about serving in the United States House of Representatives and the goal of decentralizing power in the House. And the obligations that we have to the districts that we represent back home. It is an incredible privilege, but it is also an incredible responsibility, and I do not take it lightly, and I know that no one in this room does. Rosendale has been among those in the House Freedom Caucus who for three straight days did not vote for McCarthy. But early Friday, 15 holdouts changed their votes, leaving just six opposed to McCarthy's nomination, Rosendale among the six. I have respect for the people who were engaged in this process and willing to, to fight for the things that they believe in. Uh, and, and Matt Rosendell is one of those folks. Freshman Congresswoman-elect Harriet Hageman from Wyoming has voted for McCarthy since the beginning, but says she appreciates the efforts of the members who opposed him. I see this as a very positive, healthy way that republics are supposed to work. Montana's other representative, Congressman-elect Ryan Zinke, joined Harriet Hageman and the majority in voting for McCarthy. The Republicans will control the gavel as soon as we can get um, Mr. McCarthy in there. And that was what my goal was, was to make sure that we were protecting the Republicans' majority. And we're going to get a speaker. We're going to get busy. We're going to approve the rules. And we're going to hit the ground running on Monday. In Billings, David J. MTN News. Two years ago today, January 6, 2021, much of the nation watched in horror as a mob of rioters staged a deadly attack on the U.S. Capitol. Today, members of Congress paused as the names of the officers who lost their lives were remembered for their sacrifices, which also included a sixth officer killed at a Capitol checkpoint. At least 950 people have been charged so far, nearly half of whom have either pleaded guilty or been convicted. Well, Jared Hughes, one of two Helena brothers who were charged in the attack on the Capitol, learned his sentence today after admitting his guilt. Hughes will spend three years, 10 months in prison and must pay $2,000 in restitution. The Hughes brothers pleaded guilty to obstruction of an official proceeding and aiding and abetting back in August. Hughes said in court documents that he originally thought his actions were patriotic but now he feels he was duped and taken advantage of by former President Trump. A big change this week as retail pharmacies are now allowed to offer abortion pills in the United States for the first time. Patients will still need a prescription for the drugs, but as our Phil Van Pelt found out, this will be a significant change for access. Abortion pills are now going to be widely more accessible across the U.S. and right here in Billings after the FDA dropped a rule that previously prevented pharmacies from selling them. Large retail pharmacies like Walgreens and CVS have signaled they will undergo steps to carry Mifepristone, as will Farm 406 here in the Magic City. Healthcare providers need to be there for everyone. 
we can't be um, putting our personal views on the front line. We can't be saying no. We have to follow the laws and do what's right for everybody in this country. Previously, the drug, which can be used up to 10 weeks into pregnancy, could only be dispensed by mail order pharmacies or by specifically certified doctors or clinics. Under new FDA rules, patients will still need a prescription, but any pharmacy that agrees to accept those prescriptions can dispense those pills. The ruling is already dividing opinions. Being able to access, access your prescribed medication by picking up at the pharmacy, just like you would any other prescription, is really, really important to people who are trying to access base, just basic health care, which abortion absolutely is. Levy Pregnancy Services CEO Cindy Nordstog is concerned by the ruling. She told MTN, quote, I do not see how such ruling ensures the safety and well-being of any woman. For over 20 years, the FDA limited dispensing medication abortion pills to a subset of specialty offices and clinics due to safety concerns. What new scientific information has developed that now brands these pills safer? Nordstog cited an FDA report of 28 confirmed deaths following the usage of the drug. Fuller countered, saying my pre-stone has a proven track record of success. Mifepristone has been used for a really long time, more than 20 years. It's safe, it's effective, it's been used by more than 4 million people. This really just increases access to it in ways that help patients who live rurally, who might have low incomes, um, and really need to have easier access to health care. Austin believes it will still take about three to six months to get the pills in stock. In Billings, Phil Van Pelt, MTN News. Thanks to everybody who has been sending in pictures tonight. We have way more than we could show, but I want to show what we can. Cliff Slater had this one of the full wolf moon, and Leon came through with a great shot from Cody. Always terrific pictures, especially in the night sky. Thanks, Leon, for that one. Irene caught this one around the Columbus area of the Yellowstone River. Some of the brilliant colors around it, some of the ice and snow you can still see. Mike Ludlam came through with a terrific shot catching through the clouds here of the wolf moon. And then also Stephanie from from over in around Prairie County. That's the Terry area. Uh, brilliant pictures there as well. I want to get Dave's in as well from around the Paradise Valley. Thanks for sending your pictures at weather at KTVQ.com. Water worries in Heisha, Montana's Department of Environmental Quality says the town is dealing with a public health emergency and it's one without an easy fix. Our Kelsey Marison contacted the town for information and finally connected with the mayor after being hung up on multiple times. She's in Heisham with the latest. Residents of Heisham were recently sent out this boil water advisory, but they tell us this problem with their water goes back much further than that. Actually, almost a year. When you ask residents of Heisham, Montana why they live here, most talk about the high quality of life. I've lived here for 50 years. There's just something about living in a small town without big city worries. But this is one big exception. There's dirty water in town. Residents say for much of the last year, water like this has been pouring out of their taps. At times there's more film in a cup of water than there is in a regular cup of coffee. And it turns out this is much more serious than many thought. It is a public health emergency and people do need to boil their water before consuming it. Montana's Department of Environmental Quality says the problems all started last March when the town's water storage tanks started leaking. Residents were asked to boil water. Is it clear in the bucket? No, it's not perfect. Fast forward to December, when a malfunction at the water plant led to more problems. Health officials say the town's water plant is no longer filtering or disinfecting any of the water, which comes from the Yellowstone River. All of those stop gaps have failed. That's why they're on a boil water advisory, because pathogens that aren't rendered harmless by chlorine are also not being filtered out. The town started distributing these notices in late December, asking residents to boil all water. A resident sent us one Friday, so we called the town's offices. Hi, this is Kelsey Marison calling from Q2 in Billings, Montana. How are you doing? We were hung up on twice before finally being passed along to the mayor, who declined an interview, only saying the town is working with the DEQ to fix the problems. But a solution won't happen soon and won't be cheap. It is going to take some money to do these upgrades, and funding is, you know, half of the battle because it's, they aren't inexpensive. Meanwhile, residents like Jessica Anderson continue to receive monthly water bills. And that isn't sitting well, especially knowing the dangers the DEQ says come with drinking the water. When you flush your toilet and it looks like all it is is coke in your toilet bowl or coming out of your faucets. 
In Hysham, Kelsey Marison, MTN News. Now, MTN did speak with Hysham Mayor Larry Fink earlier this evening. He tells us repairs to the water plant will cost more than a half million dollars and says the town is working with the DEQ on a 90-day plan to fix the problems. A community meeting will be held sometime later this month. Well, that water in Heisha may remind you of this. Brown and even black water has been pouring out of the faucets at the Meadowlark Mobile Home Park in Billings on and off for much of the last year. But tonight there are some new developments. City and county officials met with Haven Park, the owners of that mobile home park today, to discuss connecting the park to city water. The complex is already connected to city sewage, but right now Meadowlark trucks in its own water. The city says it's about a 100-day process before Meadowlark could connect to city water. Haven Park is currently replacing tanks and filters at the mobile home complex, hoping that will solve the ongoing problems and will then decide whether to try and connect to city water. Police in Columbus warning residents about some funny money that has been making its way around town. Take a look here. Police say these fictitious $100 bills are being passed around the area. They may look real, but they're clearly labeled motion picture use only. Police want to remind anyone trying to pass these off as a payment, even as a joke, that they could face criminal charges. Well, ahead on the MTN News at 10 here on Q2, the Billings Library giving out more than books, how the library is helping out some of the city's homeless. And then later in sports, we'll hit the hardwood with a couple of basketball matchups. We'll be right back. The MTN 10 o'clock news continues right after this.